it's a pleasant time to learn something about pumps so we already learned you can get up pumps so today we learn something about vein pumps so vein pumps the rota which contains radial slots in spline to the drive shaft and rotates inside the camry each slot contains a vein designed to mate with the surface of the ring as the rotor turns a centrifugal force keeps the veins out against the surface of the cam ring during one of revolution of the rotor rotation the volume increases between the rotor and the cam ring this volume expansion causes a reduction of pressure and thus suction occurs which causes the fluid to flow through inlet port and fill the void as the rotor rotates through the sector of second of revolution the surface of the cam ring pushes the veins back into the their slots and the volume is reduced this positively ejects the trapped fluid through the discharged port so this is a sliding vein pump there is an eccentricity between the center line of the rotor and the center line of the cam ring if the eccentricity is zero there will be no flow e max eccentricity max is equal to dc minus db so divided by 2 the maximum value of eccentricity produces a maximum volumetric displacement pi by 4 d square d square suffix c minus d square suffix l so theoretical flow rate can be given by so q this is equal to vx and divided by 60 so dc so outside diameter of gear teeth so d b inside diameter of gear tooth width of uh, is equal to width of gear tooth some vein pumps have previous have some provisions for mechanically varying the eccentricity a hand wheel or pressure compensator can be used to move the cam ring to the cam ring to change the eccentricity so fixed displacement and balanced vein pumps in the fixed displacement vein pumps the rotor housing eccentricity is constant constant hence the displacement volume is fixed the constant volume of the fluid is discharged during each revolution of the rotor variable displacement unbalanced vein pump variable displacements can be provided by housing can be moved with respect to the motor rotor the movement changes the eccentricity and hence the displacement piston pumps a yeah, piston pump works on the principle that a reciprocating piston can draw in fluid when it retards in a cylinder bore and discharge when it extends there are some types of piston pumps one is axial design having piston parallel to the axis of the cylinder block the another type of piston pump is a radial design which has pistons arranged radially in a cylinder block axial piston pumps can be either better bent axis or swash plate so next we see the types of axial piston pump in axial piston pump rotary shaft motion is converted to axial reciprocating motion which derives the piston most axial piston pumps are multi piston designs and utilize check valves or pour plates to direct liquid flow from inlet to outlet inline piston pump an axial piston pump in which the pistons are in line with the axis of drive shaft 
the drive motion is converted to reciprocating by means of swatch plate mounted on the drive shaft. Thus the rotation of swatch plate produces in and out motion of the piston in their cylinders and hence the fluid is discharged. A fixed displacement in line axial pump. The axial pump is discharges constant volume of oil is the fixed displacement pump. Variable displacement in line pump. A displacement pump can be designed to have variable displacement capability. This can be achieved by altering the angle of switch plate. When the piston carrying body turns, the exit passage in the cylinder bows move along the control slots of a firmly positioned control plate and alternatively to the suction or discharge pipelines. So fixed piston bend taxis piston pump. In fixed displacement pump, the pumps are mounted in a fixed casing so that swing angle cannot be adjusted. So displacement of the piston and hence constant discharge of fluid are achieved. Variable displacement bent axis pump. The variable displacement pumps, the swing angle can be varied because the volumetric displacement of the pump varies with the offset angle. The increase in offset angle will increase the piston stroke and hence the fluid displacement. When the offset angle is zero, then the displacement will be zero. However, the practical reasons angle is to be varied from zero to 30. So the radial piston pumps. The radial pump has a number of radial pistons in a cylindrical block which revolves around the stationary eccentric cam. In these pumps, the pistons move perpendicular to the shaft center line. As the cylinder block rotates, the eccentricity of the causes an in and out pumping motion of the pistons. The fluid inflow and outflow at each piston is controlled through revolving parts. During the downstroke, the each piston is connected to the fluid inlet and hence fluid is drawn inside the cylinders. During the upward stroke, each portion of piston is connected to the fluid outlet. Hence the fluid is discharged outside the pump. Next we move on to the performance of pumps. So it specify the uh, pump performance means in what it what it will be the best how the pump will be uh, designed and uh, how it will activated with respect to the design so what will be the output so that is the main aim of our uh, concepts the design purpose is to we have to extract something in a feasible and in an excellent way so that's why we we need to study this kind of pump purposes uh, that is performances. So from which only we can understand the existing pump performance or uh, their uh, execution level from which we can alter such things to improve the performance of the pump in a betterment of uh, futures. So far we have to analyze, uh, analyze the performance in an excellent way. So that's why we consider such kind of uh, terms we included in our uh, pump characteristics and uh, the in terms of performance. So what are the different kind of uh, performance criterion we utilized in our pump or in, in, in engineering any kind of uh, uh, component we have to analyze such parameters to be followed. So what are the parameters we need to follow? That should be ensured in a right way. So that is the main thing. Here the performance means we have to specify with the efficiency. So what is the output? What is the input? So what will be the ratio? So that is the concept we frequently used in our engineering. So from which we can change such things. If we change such things, what will be the things may be happen? 
that should be ensured and overlook the design and rechange the such terms in an efficient way that is the main thing